This video is sponsored by the wonderful Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. The Sega Dreamcast has always been a console that's kind of filled me with a bit of sadness looking back on it, as when this console launched in 1998, it really did feel like it had such big ambitions and a promising future in front of it, only for it to be discontinued just a few years later in 2001. But even though the Dreamcast is considered a commercial failure, or at least enough of one to cause Sega to quit the home console business altogether, today, if you talk to any retro gaming fan, the Dreamcast is nearly always mentioned amongst their favourite consoles, and it really seems to be a machine that found its audience after its commercial life. And I've got to admit, I'm one of those people. I did play a friend's Dreamcast at college back in the day, but I didn't get mine until years later, and it really feels like I missed out on a great system at the time. Now, the Dreamcast had so many innovative features that would be found on other consoles that came after, including the built-in modem. Now, previous consoles had add-ons to allow you to game online, but the Dreamcast was the first console that came with a dial-up modem fitted out of the box. And even though dial-up internet isn't really a thing for most of us these days, there are still some very affordable and easy solutions to get your Dreamcast online in 2022, including DreamPi, which many people still use to play the classic Dreamcast games online. But back in the Dreamcast heyday, Sega also released an official broadband adapter. Now, broadband wasn't all that widespread back in the late 90s, early 2000s, so that means that these are actually quite hard to find. They're pretty rare today, but I am lucky enough to have an official Sega broadband adapter in the box. And I've also got the official Dreamcast keyboard and a new unused Dreamcast mouse here as well. Now, these are really just rebranded cheap PC parts, and there's nothing really special about them. They've just got the Dreamcast connector on the end of the cables, but it does give us everything that we need to have a machine that we should be able to browse the web on. And obviously having a keyboard and a mouse will mean that it's a lot nicer than using other consoles that rely entirely on the controller and an on-screen keyboard. Now, there is no hard disk or built-in web browser on the Dreamcast, so how do we get this thing online? Well, actually, all the configuration and the setup is handled via software. Now, originally, here in the UK, they released a product called the Dream Key, and I've still got an original sealed version from 1999 here, but that won't work with my broadband adapter. My adapter actually has a later third-party suite supplied with it called Planet Web. And of course, we'll need to remove the original dial-up modem that you can see here on the side of the Dreamcast that for some reason hasn't yellowed like the rest of my console has. That is actually still the original Dreamcast color. And hopefully we'll get a bit of sunshine this summer so I can do a bit of retro brighting and get my Dreamcast looking back to that shade again. So we'll just pop that off and then put the broadband adapter on that just slots into the same expansion slot here. And then we plug in an ethernet cable and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, so now that we are fully set up, it's time to get this Dreamcast connected to the information superhighway and do some web surfing 90s style. Uh, it's actually quite handy as well that the Dreamcast is capable of VGA output. That means I can connect it up to this modern screen, uh, this Samsung monitor, that still has a VGA port alongside DisplayPort and HDMI, as a lot of the cheaper monitors tend to these days. So I hooked it up to that. We've got the mouse and keyboard. And it turns out that the, the Planet Web disk, unfortunately, won't load on my Dreamcast. Now, I've got a feeling that could be a region lock thing because I don't think these were ever sold here in the UK, but there are ways to bypass that using stuff like Codebreaker or the Utopia Discs or other solutions. But instead, I'm going to use a slightly more modern collection featuring the XDP web browser that dates from around 2008. So, you know, in web terms, it is still hideously outdated, but it should at least work with my broadband adapter. And setting this up is actually really straightforward. Now, I've got to give a big shout to the Dreamcastic channel here on YouTube, who did a really straightforward tutorial on setting this up with a broadband adapter. So I'll link that video in the description if you're interested. But really, it's as straightforward as going into the options and then just setting up your network information, giving your Dreamcast a manual IP address, configuring things like the gateway and DNS, all pretty standard networking setup. And then we can quickly skip through all the stuff about configuring mailboxes. You know, I'm not fussed about trying to get email working on here today. And when we've sped through all that, we should be able to save the configuration to the system and then fire up the web browser and give it a go. 
Now, just before we hop into that part of the video, I wanted to take a quick moment to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, the wonderful Squarespace. Now, I was so pleased when Squarespace reached out to support my channel, as I've actually used Squarespace for my personal websites for over a decade. And as someone whose web design skills started and ended using Notepad to make sites back in the day, Squarespace makes it incredibly easy for anybody to get great looking SEO optimized and very usable websites by using their gorgeous custom templates to suit whatever type of site you want to make. And to prove how easy it is to use, when we got married a few years ago, we were out for lunch and my wife-to-be suggested that we set up a website for our wedding RSVPs. So I pulled my MacBook out of my bag and made a site for it on Squarespace in a cafe in under an hour. So I want you to try it out with a free trial by going to my link, squarespace.com slash Danwood, set your site up, and then when you're ready to launch it, you'll get a massive 10% off your first purchase of a website or a custom domain. Okay, then time to do some web surfing on the Sega Dreamcast. Now, a quick apology, I don't actually have a way to screen capture VGA output at the moment. I do need to put my hand in my pocket and invest in some kind of capture card for that. Um, so hopefully you don't mind that for now, we're gonna take it old school and just zoom the camera into the monitor. Hopefully you can see what's going on. But I think we'll start with a site here that we know is gonna work and should you know guarantee to be online at the moment and work with any device. Let's try google.com. So we'll click on that. It will then warn me that we're gonna be using the broadband adapter to connect to the network. Yes, that is okay. And uh, hopefully, there we go, google.com, um, displayed in dark theme, <laughs> it seems here, uh, with blue on black text. So if I scroll down, oh, there we go, there's a search bar and the, the Google logo looking as it should. Um, the scroll wheel on the mouse doesn't appear to work, but we can use the toolbar here. And if I go to the, uh, the left of the screen and the right, it will automatically scroll using the mouse pointer, so that's a pretty nice feature. So we'll try searching for something. Um, so we'll click in the search bar there. And as you see, we'll get the on-screen keyboard that we can control using the Dreamcast controller, but you know, we don't need that. We've got a proper keyboard here. So we can type in Dreamcast, click on okay. I love that little transfer animation of the, the Dreamcast swirl there in the bottom right of the screen. And here are the Google search results looking pretty much as you'd expect. You know, it kind of seems, you know, the colors are right now as well. And we've got the images there as well. So the only thing I imagine you're gonna find using a web browser of this vintage is that today, most websites are secure HTTPS websites, which um, are probably not gonna work on here. So we'll click on that Wikipedia article. Um, it warns me that it's a insecure page. We'll go to OK. Yeah, and as you can see in the URL bar at the bottom, HTTPS Wikipedia.org. So I imagine anything with a security protocol that's modern is not going to work on this browser, which does rule out, you know, pretty much all modern websites that are kept up to date. There is a way around that, though, that I'll show you in just a minute. Before we do that, though, I know there is another um, couple of search engines that are meant to work on here. So how do we get to a different website? Well, if I go to the top of the screen where normally you'd expect a URL bar to unhide or something, um, yeah, that kind of user interface hadn't been decided on yet. So what we need to do is press S1 on the keyboard. Now, this is normally where you'd find a Windows key on a standard keyboard, but if I press that, you'll see we get this um, little navigation bar pops up on the side looking very Y2K aesthetic here, isn't it? Um, with a bunch of things that we can just hop into, we'll try a few of those maybe later. For now though, we wanna to go to jump to go to a different URL. So uh, yeah, I love that terminology. So if we try, this search engine is meant to work on here. We use uh, aliweb.com, which is not something I'm familiar with. I haven't tried this one before. And there we go, looking uh, yeah, September 2001. Maybe that was the last time this site was updated. Um, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, <laughs> Lycos or Excite or something like that, you know, kind of one of those late 90s web portals where you had a, a lot of stuff going on. Um, there's a transfer animation you can see in the corner there. Very cool. And it's still loading the images. Now, uh, I am finding that, you know, on very simplistic websites, this does kind of work quite well, but, you know, if there's anything a bit more complicated going on, images and all that tends to take quite a while. 
as most machines did of this vintage. So there we go. Aliweb, the web's oldest search engine, it says. So yeah, we can uh, go down here. And there we go. It's kind of like a web directory, a bit like Yahoo used to be. So it gives you all these sites that are kind of broken down. So, um, and again, I guess most of these are going to be HTTPS. We'll try to search in there for Dreamcast in here, see if we find anything. And I couldn't locate a match for my entry. Um, and we've got a 1997 copyright date here for the search technology, so maybe the Dreamcast wasn't out last time this site was updated. So uh, there is one more that we can try, though. So I'm going to press S1 again. And we'll go to jump. And this search engine is actually made for very simplistic HTML1 websites. So we'll try and here. This is good to use on retro machines. So that's quite interesting. An old um, CNN site there from 2000. So we'll click on that. Is that going to load that page for us? Because you would imagine that most of CNN site would be using modern web standards, but no, this appears to work. Can we go down and see the article? There we go. Let's try something else that's quite simplistic that should work on the Dreamcast browser as well. And this is um, one of my favorite information resources on the web for classic text files, textfiles.com. Um, kind of, you know, look in that, that classic terminal kind of font there and green on black. So let's click on these. And these are um, text files that date back to the 1960s. So a really good collection of uh, old school resources laid out into all different categories. So we're going to computers here. And again, it's quite a long directory, so we need to give the page a bit of time to load here. And a minute or so later, we get the navigation bar. And as you can see, it's a very long page with uh, a load of text files that are linked from here. Um, we can try just clicking on one of these. And there we go. Um, apart from the fact that it goes off screen a bit, as you'd expect, I mean, the resolution of this, it was designed for televisions. Um, so really this web surfing experience is meant to be enjoyed from uh, a couch looking at your TV in your living room. So um, back then, probably like, what, a 28 inch CRT. So it's a bit annoying that you've got to kind of scroll left and right to read them. But, you know, in terms of readability, uh, the fonts are very big and clear. So it's quite a nice experience in that regard. And uh, if you want to navigate the websites as well, you go to the other side of the keyboard and press on the S2 key that gives you another little pop up window that floats here and it gives you all of your standard web navigation tools. So, um, yeah, we can go back to the last page, which will probably take a while because it's massive. So <laughs> I'll stop that cancel. And instead, we'll try going to into the website so and another site you may have seen on my channel before because i love this resource is the old internet again the old net.com now uh, this actually takes all of the the web archive from archive.org on the Wayback Machine strips out all of the stuff that makes it work properly on modern web browsers and lets you view those classic sites using a retro web browser. So in here, we can uh, go to, um, I think this might be quite appropriate, sega.com and uh, we'll check that out in the year. Let's go a bit later. Let's go 1999, see if we can find um, anything about, actually, I've got a bit early here. 96, okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the Sega.com site in 1996. This is actually telling us here a low cost, easy to use alternative to access the World Wide Web on your Sega Saturn. So obviously this is a couple of years before um, the Dreamcast was launched. I'm quite curious about web surfing on the Saturn though. That's not something I've tried. Could be a future video. Wow, this is cool. So I guess it's going to tell us how uh, modern up to date we are here. In 1939, you watched the Nothing's I Wasn't Born. Nineteen eighty nine you played. Okay. <laughs> now I can watch, play, and browse using my Sega Saturn. Yeah, the Sega Saturn Netlink. I didn't know anyone that owned one of these.
But looking back at this era of web design, yeah, this is very nostalgic, isn't it? Sega brings you a low-cost, easy-to-use alternative to access the World Wide Web on your TV screen using your Sega Saturn. I wonder what that experience was like compared to the Dreamcast. Okay, we'll try jumping forward in time a couple of years to 1999 and see uh, how Sega were pushing the Dreamcast that obviously was brand new then on Sega.com. And that was their slogan for the uh, advertising in North America, definitely. It's thinking. So uh, it doesn't look quite as complete an image as the 96 version. Some uh, missing graphics and stuff here. Can we click on Dreamcast and what's that going to take us to? There we go. The Sega Dreamcast is the ultimate video game console, a polygon crunching monster with power to spare. The Sega Dreamcast creates incredible living worlds with stunning 3D graphics. Which it definitely did. And we can see the controller there as well. Is that a video? We could try that in a second. Yes, yeah, definitely got that kind of turn of the millennium uh, graphic style here as well with these kind of, you know, spacey backgrounds and lots of greys and blues. Um, and you often find that these images aren't complete. So if I try the, uh, let's try the futuristic mini movie, um, I'd be very surprised if archive.org has saved these, but you never know, sometimes I do. And after a disappointing two minute wait, unfortunately, we're just told that the Wayback Machine hasn't archived that URL, so we, uh, we can't watch that video, unfortunately. And of course, GeoCities was kind of the late 90s, early 2000s equivalent of Facebook. You know, if you want to make your own online web presence for free, um, free homepages and email. As you can see, this uh, displays pretty nicely using the XDP web browser here. And Merry Christmas to you as well, the team from Icon Depot in 1996, even though I'm recording this in May. And as well as checking out historical websites, there are still websites online today that are designed to be used on the Sega Dreamcast, like this one here, Dreampipe, which is a modern update of a Dreamcast browser portal from back in the day that still works just fine using your Sega Dreamcast in 2022. As you can see, it's got a modern copyright date on there as well, and we can check out the latest site updates on here too. And being that this is actually optimized for using on this web browser. As you can see, you know, most stuff just fits fine on here. Not too much scrolling around, loads really quickly too, and everything should function just fine in here. As this is really cool. There was, believe it or not, some DLC that you could get for Dreamcast games back in the early 2000s. You know, the machine was very ahead of its time. And obviously when the websites went off, you lost all that, but luckily they've got an archive of uh, all the ones they could track down on the website here. And what you can do is you can actually download them directly to your VMU on your Dreamcast and use it in your Dreamcast games. So for example, if I want to use Rayman 2 DLC here, if I click on that, as you can see here, it should just let me click on the download link. And there it says, do I want to download this file? I'll go to yes, and it will download it onto my VMU that's in my controller. So I pick a slot on here, uh, memory card A, slot one, yeah, it's only a save game, whatever. And we've saved it to the Dreamcast VMU, the memory card unit that's in there. So uh, yeah, that is very cool. You know, very ahead of its time, this system. And this is very cool. They've actually archived some of the Sega game websites from back in the day as well. Like this Sonic Adventure 2's homepage from 2001. So if we're going to the English section here, we should be able to uh, navigate all the information on here. Um, just as we did uh, 21 years ago. God, that makes me feel old. <laughs> it looks like they're actually still doing some updates to it as well, which is quite cool. Um, what's hint there? Does that give some hints for the game, I imagine? A little Q&A there, hero side. And again, using a site like this, it's actually optimized for the Dreamcast and uh, of the era, you find that these will load a lot quicker than, you know, trying to browse longer or more modern websites on this browser. As soon as I, as soon as I see that title, City Escape, that theme tune is just uh, popping into my head now. So there you go, gives you a few hints to play uh, Sonic Adventure 2. What's BBS? Bulletin board? Wow, the BBS is for people new to Sonic and to the internet. Is that still going to work? Seems quite late to do a bulletin board system in uh, 
Ah, there we go. It's not actually a BBS, it's actually a forum by the looks of it, but they're calling it a BBS. And again, people are still posting in here today by the looks of it. Um, some posts from the last few months in here. So good to see that community still exists and they're still accessible using the Dreamcast as well. And another Dreamcast community that's online today is Blue Swirl. Now on this site, they've got loads of stuff on here as well, including a load of Dreamcast VMU save games. So if you get to a certain point in a game where uh, you can't get past it, they've actually um, quite usefully collected together a load of saves that you can download to your VMU that will uh, get you to certain points in your games. That's pretty cool. Um, as you can see here, there's loads of stuff you can go to, multimedia sections, movies, music. So again, I'm not going to drag this video on for too much longer. You can kind of get a, an idea of what browsing the web on the Dreamcast was like back in the day. And I've got to say, now, if you didn't have a PC back in 98, 99, and this was your only web browsing experience, I think it would be pretty good. You know, you've got the mouse and the keyboard, you can hook it up to your TV, you don't need an expensive monitor back then either. So I think in terms of a couch web experience, this was very ahead of its time. So uh, that's been a look at browsing the web in 2022 using the Sega Dreamcast. If you've got any memories of it or maybe some sites that you think I should check out on the Dreamcast that work well on it, please do leave a comment. And just a quick heads up that if you enjoy my videos on YouTube, I also do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast, The Retro Hour, with guests on the show each week, veterans of the industry. You can get it every Friday from your favorite podcast client or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, why don't you check out a couple more of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.